What's up guys, David Nerd 1, 2, and 2, and it's Discussion Day. Ah yes, Discussion Day. And today we're talking about Master Duel. Konami has finally released its Yu-Gi-Oh! Simulator. Konami kept quiet about the game up until pretty much they were getting ready to release it. So for a long time, people weren't quite sure what to think. Now that we got our hands on it, let's talk about it. I'm gonna go over a couple of things that I really, really like about the game and a few things I really don't. Most of this is going to be my first impressions after playing the game for a few days, which opinions may be subject to change as the game kind of matures. I know when Duel Links first came out, I was kind of ho-hum on the whole thing, but now I, I really enjoy the game. So, you know, once it got its legs, it was all right. This is going to be a shorter video this week because Ryan and I are working out the kinks on a new editing uh, workflow. He's gonna take on some of the bulk edits while I do the major like funny stuff, memes, and the real making the video look pretty stuff. Both of those two things are really time consuming. So having to do both has been a lot of work for me over the years. So him taking just the, the bad cuts out of it does actually save me a ton of time. So thank you, Ryan. So for this week, we're just doing a short one to kind of test the waters here. We have a list video also in the works. It's top 10 best spirit monsters. So uh, look for that next week. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's start the video off with the negativity so we can end on a high note. These are the three things that I am a little not so hot on about Master Duels. It is not a perfect simulator. The one thing I really like about YGO Pro and Yu-Gi-Oh! Omega and all those other things, and even Dueling Book to a lesser extent, yeah. is that it is just a way to sit down with a deck list, construct a deck of 40 cards, and then go and duel somebody with it. It isn't trying to be a video game, it's just trying to allow you to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in a digital format. For a long time, Konami had not given us that kind of tool. Most of the time we got releases for whatever handheld it was or whatever. And they are a game. You need to go on a campaign and collect cards and grind for XP and it's a game. And Master Duels isn't necessarily different. You don't just have every single card available to you. All cards you care about are in one booster pack. Seems pretty difficult to pull the cards you want. You can't just go into deck editor and clack away and build a deck. The second thing that I am not super hot on is the ladder matchmaking. It seems to work okay, you just get thrown into a duel, but there doesn't seem to be many options, at least not, nothing I could figure out. It's just, you go, you play a single game of yu gi mans against uh, somebody of like level. It's the most bare bones matchmaking there, there could possibly be. Granted, it is nice that it exists, but um, it'd be nice to be able to play a match and have a side deck I don't know, did we actual simulate a tournament experience? Because it does not seem that that is uh, something that we can do. Now, that might be added later, so this might be anachronistic if you're watching this at a later date. It'd be cool if we could play matches, or there was more diverse uh, types of matchmaking, whether it was matches, or hell, maybe like, a, maybe like a casual mode or something, I don't know. And thirdly, this is kind of specific to me, I guess. It runs like shit on the Switch. Holy crap. Switch is the only version that I have access to that has controller support. And with someone with carpal tunnel like I have, controller I have found they are far more ergonomic. Uh, too bad it runs like poop. Once you get into a game, it's not so bad, but like navigating menus is an absolute slog. This is obviously probably due to the fact that it's cross platform, so they had to release a bunch of different versions of the game all at once. And the Switch one is probably just not very optimized feels bad, man. But I have the Switch right there, so it's annoying that it runs bad on that version. All right, let's stop dumping on the game because there's honestly, uh, from what that sounds like, it sounds like I really hate it, but I actually love it very much. So let's, let's talk about the three good things about this game that make it why it is so good. It is not a simulator, but it is also not quite a game. It is more akin to a normal digital TCG than let's say any of the other Konami versions of the game of Yu-Gi-Oh that they have released in a digital format, save Duel Links. For my live streams, we always have this joke where if I'm playing a deck for the week and it's not working so well, everyone inevitably says, well, just play a different deck. The joke being that's very hard to do if you don't have the cards already. If Duel Links was just a simulator, you could just build any deck you want and go play it. While you can't 
technically do that in Master Duels either. Its crafting system is generous, the gems are generous, you get a lot of cards per booster pack. So building a deck, a specific deck, at least the first one you build, really isn't that much of a chore. In like two hours, I had a functioning frog deck, the deck I wanted to play, and I just had to grind through a couple tutorials and some single player hoo-ha and play a couple online matches, and I had it. So while it is not a perfect simulator, it is still a lot easier to build a deck in closer to what a simulator would offer, so it is nice that we finally have something at least remotely related to YGO Pro that is officially supported by the company that makes the game. That's pretty optimistic of you! Well, I mean, yeah, it is Konami after all, eh? Number two! I know I kind of touched upon this in the last part, but I think I want to devote some bulk of the video to talking about the pack system in general. Now, the game is not a simulator, like I said, but booster packs are pretty easy to come by. Gems, the things you buy booster packs with, seem pretty generous. That could just be because the game just came out and they're trying to get us all hooked, and they might start not giving us gems, kind of like uh, Duel Links kind of petered out to. It's a really slow trickle now. But assuming the influx of gems to our gem accounts is relatively stable, at least for the first couple of years of the game's release, getting booster packs is pretty, pretty easy. Not only that, but the crafting mechanic in this game is a lot more robust than the one that we saw in Duel Links. If you have three super rares that you pulled out of your packs just lying around that you never have any intent on playing, you can dismantle those cards into their key components and then buy a super rare that you want. And you don't need to have a copy of that super rare to begin with or anything. Like if when I built my frog deck, I just dusted uh, a couple ultra rares and bought a totally awesome. It was that easy. Instead of just being confided to whatever the card trader has, we actually can just get any card we want. We have to have bulk stuff to dismantle, sure, but you get a lot of supers and ultras in your booster pack. So you just have to spend some gems and one way or the other, you will get to the cards, like I said, at least for your first deck, to the stuff that you want. And not only that, there is secret packs that you have available to you for a limited amount of time when you pull a certain card. If you pull, let's say, I don't know, a battling boxer glass jaw, you unlock an opportunity to open a booster pack that has a more curated selection of cards, kind of pointing towards that battling boxer archetype. For instance, when I was pulling uh, Melfi's because I just wanted to get the deck in case I wanted to play it, I was given the opportunity to pull a Friends of the Forest or whatever booster pack, which allows you to pull cards related to like Malfi Rabbi and, and mystical beasts of the forest and things like that. Granted, the special packs aren't perfect. They still pull from the entire catalog of cards. They just have a greater chance of giving the cards that you want. So it's not like a one-to-one -one quite. It's not, it's not just a booster pack of the stuff that you want, but you get enough of the booster pack to gear towards the thing that you're attempting to pull that it doesn't feel unreasonable. At the very least, you can get the commons and rares pretty reliably, and then you just have to dust other crap in order to get the ultras and supers that you want to pat out the deck. And the more cards you have in your archetype for your deck, the easier time you're going to have getting it because you'll be able to pull those cards from those special packs instead of like my frog deck, which is actually not many frogs and not many palazoics if you really think about it. It's mostly just a bunch of generic trap cards. <laughs> so like, uh, that deck was a bit expensive to start off with because uh, a lot of them aren't actual archetype cards, so there's no special pack that supports them. Also, let's just talk about that dopamine rush when you open a booster pack. The cards are all splayed out uh, face down in front of you, and you can see the glowing ones that are supers and ultras, and when it, when it goes through them, uh, it won't flip your rare stuff until the, it's flipped everything else, and you'll get this little wiggle, it's like, ooh, it's a special card. And you get those, those little wiggles, you're like, oh yeah, wiggle for me, baby, what is it? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I, I like the aesthetic of, of, the, of the card pulling, it's, it's fun. The game's focus seems to be around building the deck that you want to play, and then going off and using that deck to earn other decks you might want to play, which, frankly, that seems to be a pretty solid model to get people into the game. We're gonna wanna play the decks we're gonna wanna play. We're not gonna wanna all be stuck grinding on vanilla 2K beater beatdown until we get enough gems to pull 
add half of Drytron and play a janky weird build of it because it's impossible to get three copies of like the ultra rare card we need in order to build the deck. Dual links. But the one thing I really, really, really do enjoy about the game, and this might be just because of the Yu-Gi-Oh! environment we've had to deal with for a little while now, it is nice to play real Yu-Gi-Oh! again. Oh my god. The game looks great, it's flashy, your little buddy at the side of the screen is super, super cute, and the soundtrack is really, really fire. It does sound a little bit like like The Witcher 3, but that's not a dig against it. That's a great soundtrack. It's just a bit strange that that's the theme they went with, but it's great. The game looks and sounds fantastic, unless you're playing on the Switch. But the best part of the whole thing is that it's shiny, polished, real Yu-Gi-Oh. No, it's real Yu-Gi Mans. And because that it is real, shiny, spit-polished Yu-Gi-Oh! officially supported by the actual company that makes the game, it gives me high hopes and a lot of optimism that it will be supported as a, an official, like, third format. Where, like, Worlds will have uh, a Duel Links tournament, a Master Duels tournament, and then, like, a physical card game tournament. And if you say that sounds redundant, then, uh... <sighs> Oh, it might be a superior way to play the game, and uh, the Yugi Boomer me is a little uncomfortable with that. But, assuming we don't get rid of our actual cardboard, uh, this is actually pretty pretty hopeful, and I'm very optimistic for the future of the game. Alright guys, that was my initial thoughts about the game. They are a little bit frazzled, because I didn't write a script for this or anything. This was all just kind of off the top of my head. Join my Discord if you guys want to get in on the Master Duels action. We added a channel for it, and uh, everyone's like sharing their little like friend code thing and stuff like that. So if you guys want to duel me or whatever, or friend me, uh, it, it's available there. Or I'll make it available there. And remember, guys, if you don't troll, no matter who will, I'll see you guys on the next Master Duel stream. <laughs> Play Nurse Burn or something stupid. <laughs> Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my totally rad dueling. Watching more of these videos is almost as fine as Taya's ass? What? I'm not saying that. Fine. Then it's time to duel.